Hi, this is my studio. Like many studios, I think, it used to serve another purpose. It was a bedroom once. I think I kind of like, uh, I like that. I like the fact that this is, this is just a bedroom. It's, it's just a room. Any, anybody can turn any room into a studio. It, it's just a bedroom and this is my studio. So let's have a quick look around, shall we? Okay, these, so these are two quite important paintings uh, for me. The one on the left is Chris, and um, I'm pretty sure he was the first uh, person I put a, a white border around, um, which started the whole kind of sticker heads thing that I've done since then. I did that to, to make him stand out from the background, which he did, but uh, the, white bo the white border really acted as a good, helpful device to sort of pop him forward from the, the background. I loved this picture. I loved the... Um, the reference that was lent to me by a friend on Instagram. It's, it's just sums up sort of a lot of things about my childhood, really. The whole Cowboys and Indians thing, the Batman sweatshirt he's got there from the, the sort of 60s TV version of Batman. And he's got his plastic knife stuck between his teeth. He's gritting between his teeth. He's just, just I just love, love this kid. Uh, the one, the picture on the right is of my friend Lazarus. Lazarus is, is like I say, a big friend because he's, he's big, he's a huge guy. It's a prison warder, but he's also um, studying for a degree in, in criminal psychology, I think, which he's, he's getting close to finishing now. I painted him as, tried to emphasise a little bit the fact that he looked a bit like one of the carved heads on, on Mount Rushmore. And so the, the, the shoulders and the shirt are supposed to sort of suggest this sort of, that, that monument really. Uh, the background, the gold background was sort of an emblematic of the sun, I guess. And the words around him are, uh, in Hebrew because I didn't want it to be too obvious and not many people can read Hebrew <laughs> and that was a psalm that he chose out of the Bible that he thought was particularly important to him and that I, I just said is there any I actually asked if there's just anything that he thought was any any poem or a bit of literature that he thought might or quote that he wanted to go around his head anyway moving on Well, this is the drying area. It's um, basically a sheet of paper that's been laid on the floor so I can lay wet paintings to sort of avoid getting paint in the carpet. It's a place where I, I'll take something off the easel and I'll put it down there to dry, either to, to uh, await of eventually varnishing or it may be a stage that I've got to and I can't go any further because the paint's wet and I need to get on with something else and so I'll put a painting down there to uh, let that dry and, um, or I just put it there to think about and see whether it's finished or not. And sometimes I, I lay them down there and, and uh, decide that I actually want to do something else with the picture. There's also a lot of paint swatches there. The, the little squares of uh, paint experiments, mixes that I've, I've experimented with. The next picture there is my dad. Um, he's actually wearing my coat, which is, which is a bit too big for him, bless him. But that's, uh, I thought it looked kind of, it kind of, it kind of, it kind of disappears inside it, which I really liked. It kind of seemed to sort of embrace him in this big woolen coat. And dad was, a, was in the Navy just after the war. And um, I thought it'd be really kind of cool to kind of represent that with, with something sort of connected to the, to the Navy with a, navy type style coat and it, it just seemed to frame him really well the it was actually a real pain to paint because i couldn't get the navy color very easily uh it turned out i had to I had to paint that in in, in gray or black and white what we call grisaille and then glaze it which with a clear coat of paint which enabled me to get the color i wanted but um, that was a learning experience and and I guess when it's someone that you're close to, it's always a bit of a labour of love and, yeah. Next we have a picture of Lucy Pass, who's another member of the CVPP. We were doing a, a picture exchange of one another and she sent me a, a, a photo and she said, oh, I thought this would really suit your style. And um, I just, you know, when someone says that to me, I'm like, Oh man, you, you're trying to put me. If if you think I've got a style, then I've got to do something to uh, 
to change that. And so I just really looked and looked at the picture and thought, what can I do with this to sort of do something a little bit different? And so I just took a section of it, a section of this, this photograph that Lucy sent me. And um, on the left-hand side of the picture, as you look at it, I just painted her eye as, as you could see it pretty you know, realistically. And on the right, I just um, like polarised all of the colours and all the shapes that I could see in the eye and turned them into simple colours and simple shapes. And around the eye there, um, on, on, the, on the nose, the colours were sort of um, turned into almost um, like, a, like a map that like you might see in, in, in an um, Ordnance Survey map showing you know, graduations of, of uh, height. I just did that with colour to kind of show that a face a face is very much like a map, really. Um, you know, you work your way around it from one point to the other. There are spaces between objects that are quantifiable and measurable. Um, it has uh, it has um, shape to it. You know, valleys and hills and so forth. And so the, it's kind of a, a a sort of map, but also one that's been sort of an exploration of colour as well. And the black bands were just, um, I just thought they were an interesting way of framing that section of the painting, the, the, the image that I was interested in. And I just sketched in the their hair and some of the important lines with, with white. The strip there is a strip of colours from the, uh, the section on the right. They're just isolated as a strip of colour. The one on the left there is one of the Saints series, and the one on the right is uh, Lena. She was the first sticker head I made um, as a as a full blown sort of sticker, and was it, I intentioned actually to to cut her out at some point. But ended up framing her in the end. Uh, even you know, just I think just to record the fact that that's how the first one was sort of done, and I've, I've done a lot of these since then. The, the one on the, the left is one of the Modern Saints series, and they're just, um, that was a series of ordinary people I, that I knew who had really interesting lives, but you wouldn't actually necessarily expect that from just looking at them. This one is, is a guy uh, called Dr. Caro, but actually <laughs> you wouldn't think he was a doctor from the, the, from the painting. He's uh, got his headphones on there and plays bass at the local, our local church. But I wanted to sort of paint them in a sort of, or, as ordinary people, but in this sort of classic, iconic style with the uh, gold leaf background halo, um, which was, isn't, is intentionally imperfect. They're, it's not a perfect halo because, you know, none of us are perfect and neither ever is, ever is any saint, actually. But it was also an exploration of the word saint, which is um, nowadays we, we, I think we think that means that a saint is someone is perfect, and that's not what the the Greek word in the Bible, or the Hebrew in the Old Testament actually, it's not what it means. Saint means someone who is is called aside or called up, called apart from society maybe, um, but he's called to follow God. And that's all it means. It doesn't mean they're perfect, because nobody is perfect. And this was just to show that, really, that these are just ordinary, imperfect human beings who are, by the literal definition of the word, they are saints. They are, they are people who feel that they've been called to follow God. And um, they, this was a great series. I loved, I loved that. I loved that series. I mean, one of the guys I got to paint, who um, isn't in the studio, is actually with the owners was a scientist who worked um, with physicist Neil Bohrs. He created the braking system for um, electric trains. Um, did, he got approached by the Russians <laughs> in a restaurant in Paris to buy secrets for the guided missile system that he'd, he'd created. And it was just this ordinary bloke. He was just this ordinary guy that I, that I knew um, locally from, from the local church. And he was, um, you would never have guessed he had this incredible... Um, uh, history and the the series really was a plea to sort of like look at people and think um, I should just hope that people might imagine generously what that person's life is like and not sort of judge people by their outward appearance because you just have no idea um, what's going on behind behind the, what we see 
or the opportunity that you might have in making a, a really good friend through 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 that through that person. So I made some great friends um, painting this series, and and they were a lot of fun, and I learned a lot through painting of them. Which you you always learn something by painting people. And here we are back to the back view of my studio. It's an easel there that's with a panel on it, just keeps the sun out of my eyes and the window behind it. There's a um, skateboard leaning up against one of the cupboards and th that's actually quite important to me. I um, love skateboarding, I've done it for many, many years. I'm not particularly good at it. It's just part of who I am, I think. Who you are always comes out in, in your work some way or other, which is probably why I've painted quite a few people who, who skateboard, actually. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the, the uh, look around the studio.